let it go. 52 times a year. The week is done and over with before you know. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Hello, good evening and welcome. I am David Frost and this is That Was The Week That Was. Finally, after 60 years, the third series has finally arrived. After the first two series were cruelly cancelled by the BBC and the then Tory government of Harold Macmillan. And now the first news story of the week. The big news story of the week was, of course, the identity of Mr X. Man who had got a 17-year-old boy to send him pictures over the internet. For some reason, suddenly, all the newspapers seem to think this is quite normal behaviour. TWTWTW, we were waiting for a really big name to come out of the hat. And who was it? Hugh Bloody Edwards. That's Hugh. <laughs> Monday, the Sun wrote, Vlad to see you. They showed a picture of the Wagner boss, Pligazine, in his underpants. Amid rumours, Putin's enemy is dead. However, TWTWTW, believe it's a picture of the BBC's Hugh Edwards showing off to a young boy. <laughs> also, on Monday, Metro News wrote, Meet the drag queen bringing glamour to the farmyard. In which case, it's over to the Duracell bunny. Mary had a little and the Metro were astounded. Everywhere that Mary went, the press had her hounded. Yes, thank you very much, Duracell. Yes, we see a picture of the drag queen in a farmyard. Indeed, what better place to be dragged through a hedge backwards? <laughs> Again, on Monday, we heard about an international hitman who is wanted for an assassination of an Albanian politician who was arrested in a Morrison's in Peckham. Do you remember that episode of Only Fools and Horses with Blow-Up Dolls? This fellow had the role of the hitman in it. <laughs> At the start of this week, a US professor was stunned to find his London Airbnb consisted of just a bathroom with a bed. However, he found out it was ideal after a night out at a Weatherspoons. You have to do is roll over and stick your head down the toilet. <laughs> On Monday, a man saved a farmer trapped under a hay bale using three words. Were the three magic words bibbidi boppity boo or, hey diddle diddle, the farmer's in the middle. <laughs> in the sun, we heard that Formula One fans were absolutely baffled as a Hollywood star sang the national anthem like Elvis, alongside a saxophonist. So, it's over to the Duracell Bunny. It's one for the money, two for the money, three for the money, four for the money, and go cat go! But don't you step on my purple in robes! Well, you can do anything, but they ask about purple and in robes. <laughs> On Monday, the oldest ferry crossing to Sky was at risk from electricity pilots. The Duracell Bunny's going to let me do this one. Carry the electricity for the morning tea over the sea to Sky. <laughs> Also on Monday, a note by Geoffrey Chaucer himself asking for time off work was identified as being in his own handwriting. Yes, we have an example of Chaucer throwing a sickie. The tale of the skiving civil servant in the medieval blob. <laughs> Again on Monday, we saw the 1975's frontman arrive in a red wheelie bin to perform their set at Transmat. So that's Healy and a wheelie. Far-right libertarian Matt Healy arrived in the National Front Biffa wheelie bin. I suppose it's better than arriving on a broomstick. <laughs> on Tuesday, ITV recorded Joe Biden hailing the rock-solid US-UK relationship at his Downing Street talks with Rishi Sunak. Unfortunately, the rock-solid relationship he was talking about were Camilla's, Buckingham Palace, scone. <laughs> On Tuesday, the iNews said, The sound of silence is real and can be heard by humans. The sound of silence 
Yes, from the BBC, when asked the name of Mr X in his underpants. <laughs> also on Tuesday, my news asked, what are cluster bombs? Indeed, what are cluster bombs? Well, let's go over to reporter the Duracell Bunny for this one. Well, you know, hazelnut clusters, cluster bombs, are nothing like them. <laughs> Also on Tuesday, the iNews asked how England can refine baseball for the fourth Ashes test. Far from refining baseball, in the picture below, Johnny Basto looks like he's just dropped one. <laughs> the BBC told us that Rita Franklin's sons are fighting over a will found under a sofa. So again, it's over to the Duracell Bunny. Do, re, mi, sol, fa, la, ti, do. <laughs> Finally, on Tuesday, the Sun talked about Biden's nuclear football, which was spotted being carried out at number 10 after the president's Armageddon warning to Putin. Nuclear football? Is that a new game like baseball? <laughs> on Wednesday, the reporter Jane Moore said, it's not Joe Biden's hand on King Charles's back that worries me. It's his finger on the red button. Where's the red button, you might well ask? Is it behind Charles's ear, like a stiff teddy bear? <laughs> what worries us at TWTWTW is that it's King Charles's sausage finger on that red button. <laughs> Also on Wednesday, the Evening Standard gave us our first look at Hugh Grant as a dancing Oompa Loompa in the trailer for the new Willy Wonka film. Yes, this sad sight is what happens when the work starts to dry up. Grant will soon be biting the heads of chickens in the Geek Show next. <laughs> yes, somewhere in the film there's John Wayne firing bullets at Hugh's feet saying, Dance Oompa Loompa. Dance. <laughs> the Huffington Post gave us an unusual news story. They said, meet the people cooking recipes left by the dead on their gravestones. Yes, he doesn't miss a trick. So the Gordon Ramsay zombie cookbook will soon be available on Amazon anytime soon for £60.99. <laughs> also on Wednesday, the Metro reported on TikTok's perpetual stew which can last for decades, if you're brave enough. That's nothing. It sounds like Christmas dinner at my mother-in-law's. <laughs> there was sad news in Cornwall Live this week. A Cornwall eccentric, famous for eating roadkill, died after a battle with cancer. Arthur apparently even ditched the turkey at Christmas and would splash out a whale or dolphin instead. How he found whales and dolphins on a road we don't know. <laughs> I can hear his mother say, Arthur, Arthur, eating dolphin gives you cancer. Too late. <laughs> ITV News told us on Thursday that the UK economy had shrunk slightly after the King's coronation had slowed down economic activity. However, his sausage fingers remained exactly the same. <laughs> Shrinking of the economy is in fact a reciprocal arrangement with King Charles's ego, which grew proportionately. <laughs> the Telegraph warned us that Thames Water was flirting with socialism. So it's a question of flirt or float. It's either flirt with socialism or float with libertarian sewage. <laughs> Again on Thursday, the Times massaged King Charles's ego and said where he got his favourite strawberries from. Yes, he gets them from Annabelle Macon Jones, or should we say Nell Macon Jones, the new Nell Gwynn. <laughs> the iNews told us it's clear why Boris Johnson named his baby Odysseus, who apparently is a Greek king with whom he has much in common. We think it's more to do with Freud's Odysseus complex, which makes Boris forget the names of all his children and the password of his phone. <laughs> Finally, on Thursday, a teacher who had been stabbed at school wanted to finish the term as a teenager appeared in court. Our heart goes out to all his classes. Bad luck, kids. It's triple maths as usual on Monday. <laughs> 
on Friday, faded star Sean Ryder said he feared being assassinated by Vladimir Putin after blasting the leader in a song. It's all right, Sean. It's Bez's cooking you have to worry about. (laughs) And by the way, Sean, Putin's never heard of you. (laughs) Again on Friday, the BBC gave us Harvey Price as a smokescreen to hide Hugh Edwards behind went on to say Harvey sets a new Guinness World Record with a long train drawing. As far as TWTWTW is concerned, this is just part of the National Front gravy train. (laughs) In the iNews, Robert Jenrick said he ordered the removal of the Mickey Mouse mural as hardly any infants were at the asylum centre. Which case, why not replace Mickey with a mural of Suella Braverman as the witch in Snow White? Very age-appropriate, that one. Only the over-60s will remember it. (laughs) Finally, on Friday, we learned that the French president, Emmanuel Macron, was sent a severed human finger in the post following riots last week. Or, put another way, Macron has been given the finger. (laughs) On Sunday, according to the Irish Sunday World, a councillor was charged with pubic order offences during a conference at a county Donegal hotel. Yes, we can tell you a quick flash of the old pubic hair is enough to get you in trouble in Ireland. (laughs) Closer to home in Devon, more than a hundred people were stuck at Agatha Christie's house for seven hours on Saturday. Yes, in true Agatha Christie fashion, then there were only 99. (laughs) It was revealed on Sunday that the people trapped at the Agatha Christie house found comfort in tea and croquet. Not only were the visitors trapped, but they were clearly stuck in the sort of time warp and were made to do the Charleston and smoke cigarettes in footlong holders. Then, would you believe it, Sapphire and Steel appeared. (laughs) On Sunday, Shakira, age 46, said she was not bothered whatsoever by the age gap with her rumoured lover, Jimmy Butler, age 33. The best person to give this to is the Duracell Bunny. You know my grand feet don't lie. In the Metro News, we saw the first images of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs remake, which showed a diverse casting for newly named magical creatures. Yes, indeed, this is Snow White and the Seven Diverse National Front Actors. (laughs) Again on Sunday, The Guardian said leaps of faith, the Spanish festival where men jump over babies. Yes, indeed, you could hear the patter of whopping great feet. First one to tread on a baby wins. (laughs) Our final news story of the week comes from Mail Online. It's an antidote to Just Stop Oil. We heard that Ronaldo and Messi are raking it in and Liverpool's Jordan Henson won't be far behind if he accepts a huge offer from Saudi football. This confirms that Ronaldo, Messi and Henderson are far-right libertarian members of Just Start Oil and will run around throwing shredded dollar bills just for the hell of it. <laughs> well, this has been David Frost on That Was The Week That Was. So, goodbye, good evening and see you next week. <laughs> Let it go 52 times a year The week is done And over with Before you know